The management of hypospadias has evolved to provide good long-term functional and cosmetic outcomes. Most repairs can be accomplished in a single procedure. Multiple successful techniques have been developed. This video highlights some of the steps that are common to many of the procedures used for hypospadias reconstruction. Some of the characteristic features of hypospadias can be seen in the six-month-old boy. A hooded dorsal foreskin and ventral cordae are evident. Calibration of the urethra demonstrates the paucity of musculature of the ventral urethra. A feeding tube is used to cannulate the urethra. It is also used as a postoperative stent. Other types of stents may be also utilized as per surgeon preference. Peeling back of the foreskin reveals the full extent of the glands. A holding suture in the glands is a useful assist for retraction during surgery and can also be used to fix the stent in place at the conclusion of the procedure. A circumferential incision is started on the dorsal aspect of the inner prepuce and continued around the ventral urethral meatus. The foreskin is then dissected off the penis down to the base, staying above Buck's fascia. Extensive dissection of the ventral aspect of the penis permits the cordy to be released completely. Artificial erection can then be performed to determine if there is residual cordy that may need further correction. This is done by placing a tourniquet at the base of the penis and then injecting the corpora with sterile injectable saline. In this patient, complete foreskin dissection led to the cordy being corrected and no further correction was required. Using the technique described by Snodgrass, the dorsal urethral plate is split in the center to permit the plate to be tubularized around the stent. Incisions on either side of the urethral plate are extended to permit the plate edges to be approximated around the stent. Dissecting the glands partially off the corpora allows the glands to be able to be wrapped around the neo-urethra. There are a number of ways to achieve urethral reconstruction, including urethral advancement or a flip-flap technique. Neo-urethra is created by tubularizing the urethral plate around the feeding tube using a subcuticular suture. A vascularized layer of tissue along with its blood supply is dissected from the dorsal foreskin.
This vascularized layer is tacked in place over the neo-urethra and serves as an additional barrier to possible breakdown and fistula formation. The glands can then be closed over the reconstructed urethra with interrupted sutures and the glands reconstruction can be completed. The base of the penis is then tacked in place to permit the penoscrotal juncture to be fixed. The foreskin is then gradually tailored to accomplish skin coverage and provide a good cosmetic outcome. This often requires rotational flaps from the dorsal foreskin. The stent is fixed to the glands and a double-faced dressing is placed. Patients typically have the stent and dressing in place for a week and are managed with a double diaper technique.